All right, we are about to learn the last trig function um, of how to graph. So we have learned the sine, the cosine, the secant, the cosecant, the tangent, and now the cotangent. Just like sine and cosine looked like each other, they were just shifted. Same with secant and cosecant, they were just shifted. Cotangent and tangent is the same thing. So we know tangent has a zero going through the origin. It goes up and asymptotes pi over 2 because a period of a tan function is really um, 180. So we know that this length here is 180 or pi. Okay. Cotangent looks like this, but of course there has to be some changes. So cotangent is going to be flipped over the x-axis, so it's going to be looking like a cotangent negative and it's shifted 90 degrees. So where a zero is, it's gonna be an asymptote. Where an asymptote is, it's a zero, okay? So then I'm just gonna draw an asymptote right next to, technically it's on the y-axis, but if I draw a dashed line on top of a solid line, I'm not gonna see it. So I draw it right next to it. And then pi over two, zero. And then pi over two length out, that's gonna be an asymptote pi over two out, that's a zero, pi over two out is an asymptote, okay? And then we said it's shifted, or uh, flipped. So this, if you think about, like here you are on this tangent function and you're going up, right? Here you are on this cotangent function, you're not going up, you're going down. Okay, there we go. So it's a negative and it's shifted, okay? Same thing like we were talking about before, where the amplitude is, it doesn't really exist on these guys. So we say amplitude is none. What does the one third do? It just affects the steepness of this curve, which we don't even have to worry about, okay? The period for tan and cotangent functions are pi, divide by that constant that's with the theta or the x, which in this case is two. So every 90 degrees, a period recycles, or cycle, um, I guess recycles is the right word, right? It recycles over again. <laughs> um, okay, and then that means if we take this value and divide it by two, we have something important every 45 degrees or pi over four. All right, this is the hard part. We aren't shifting this one yet, right? But we gotta figure out where to start this graph to shrink it um, because we're having two full cycles and where uh, normally we would have one cotan. So before for sine, for cosine, for tangent, for all of those guys, where did we start? When Let's say we we're looking at cosine. What did we really look at? We looked at this point up here, right? And then we shifted this point. For sine, we looked at this point right here, and then we shifted this, whoa, and then we shifted this point. For tangent, we looked at the origin, and then we shifted the origin point. So we can't shift this guy. We're gonna start by shifting the origin, which just so happens to be this asymptote. Oh, my orange marker, it's running out. Okay, so we're gonna shift the asymptote this time. Before we were shifting these points, now we're gonna shift an asymptote. Kind of odd, but very, very, very important. All right, so we are still going to have a, a asymptote there. And I just mark the asymptotes with a dashed line. And we have a period of 90, so that means we're going to have an asymptote every 90 degrees. So an asymptote, an asymptote, an asymptote. Okay. And then halfway between our periods or our asymptotes is going to be a zero. So halfway between 90 is 45. So we're going to put a zero halfway between those, which is one and a half units on this graph. Okay, and now I can draw my asymptote.
That's not that fun. Kind of feel like Bob Ross. It's a happy little tree. Do you guys do you guys even know who Bob Ross is? I'd be so sad if you don't. Uh, look him up. He's great. Okay. Uh, it's a negative function because it's tan cotangent. Not a negative function. I shouldn't say negative. It's a decreasing function. So from the zeros, we are decreasing. There we go. And if you want to do the two parabola, like half parabola, half parabola, that's fine. Because I know that these are really tricky. All right, guys. There is cotangent. Pretty exciting. You have now learned how to graph all of the trig functions, which includes all of the parent functions as well. That's pretty exciting stuff. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, you should go look him up because that's going to be pretty, pretty great.